Okay, well, let's go through and do the tutorial for the first packet that was handed out in class. So to start with, we have Revit opened up here on our screen. First thing we're going to do is we need to select New under Projects. And under Templates, we're going to use the Architectural Template. So we'll come down here, create a new project, and we'll select OK. Give Revit a second to work here. Not always the fastest. OK. So here we've got our basic layout. We can see on the left-hand side under our project browser, under our floor plans, we have a level one, a level two, and a site level. We'll be adding some more to these later on, but for right now we can work. Make sure you're on level one, so it should be bold. If it's not, it'll turn bold, like I just here to select level two. Let's go back to level one. Up here at the top, we'll go to wall. We'll select wall to bring up the wall selection tool. And for right now, we're gonna use the generic 12 inch wall. So let's click our down arrow, so we come down here, generic 8, there's a generic 12. Okay, looking across here at the Modify Place Wall toolbar that pops up, we want to make sure that this wall is currently unconnected. We're going to change the height to 36 feet. We're going to set our location line to Finish Face Exterior. We want to make sure that we have Chain turned on. That allows us to keep turning new walls after we place one. So now we're going to draw the walls. These are based on figure 3.3-2.2 in our packet. And we'll come in here and I'll just kind of go along and you guys can follow as best you can. And I'm going to start with the top left corner of our building. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to drive over. And notice that the location line, it's putting, we're drawing the outside edge of the wall. So we're defining what's the exterior of the building right now. So I'll come over here, I'll type 140 feet. Okay, and we'll move these little elevation markers here in a minute as we go. I'm going to come down, I'm going to do the main building and come back and do the sides. Those little stairwells. So this will be 60 feet. Okay, this is 54 feet. Come down. This is 18 feet. Across. 32 feet. Okay, I can go back up 18 or I can look for the snap line that comes in. I'll just type it in to, to make sure I've got, I know that dimension right now. Come over again. I can match the end or I can type it in 54 feet. I'm going to come here and close. Now, when you did that, you needed to make sure that this was on finished face exterior. Okay. Going back into my wall. Now I'm going to well, first I'm going to move this elevation marker. I'm just moving it out of the way because we don't want to delete it because we need it later. But I want to be able to move it so I'm not drawing over it. Okay, I'm going to come down here. Now, on this one here, I could try to get to where I'm roughly 18.8. That doesn't work very well, so I'm just roughly going to draw in the rough shape of what we want for those walls. Okay, and I'll come here. Now I'm going to go back to my Modify. So I'll pick, so I get the cursor. I'll select this top wall first. And it tells me that this needs to be 18.8 off of that. Now, the dimension we're given in our plan view is from the outside face of the wall. Well, right now, you can see that our witness lines come to the center of the wall. So we're going to click on this little blue dot here that moves the witness line. So it'll move it in. Click it once more. It moves it to the outside. I need to do this one as well. In and out. At this point, when I select the wall, it'll remember where I set the witness line at. And now I can modify this dimension to be 18.8. Let's move down. I'm going to back out just a little bit. We'll select this wall here. The outside dimension on here should be 22. But again, we have to modify this witness line so that it's going to the outside face. So we'll set that to 22. And if I want, I could even modify this witness line here as well to check that that's 19.4, which matches our drawing. I'll select the outside edge here now. And again, we're looking at outside faces. So first thing I do is update those witness lines. And then that sticks out 9 foot 4. Okay. So now we have one side done. If I wanted, I could go in and I could draw the other one. Well, let's use some of our tools. So I'm going to come in here and highlight that. 
And up here at the top, we have a couple mirror tools. The one on the right is our mirror draw axis. We're going to use it first. So I've already selected this, so it knows that that's the elements I want to mirror. So when I select it, it's going to tell me down here at the bottom, pick star point for axis of reflection, meaning where's my mirror line. I'm going to come in here, and here's our little magenta triangles that go along the top line. That's our midpoint. So if I draw a straight line down, I can try and keep it on 90, or I can just come down to the bottom and find the other midpoint, select, and now I have it on both sides. So that just allowed us to do both of those without doing any additional work. If you wanted, you could have mirrored these lines down here using the same tool from before. Okay, so let's move on now to creating a custom wall style. So let's go over here to wall, select it again so it shows up walls on our property. Okay, and we're going to create one called brick on CMU. So let's look in here, and right now we're down to the bottom. Let's roll up. Exterior brick on CMU. Okay. We're going to come down here. We're going to hit our edit type button so we can see what makes up this wall. And it popped up on my other screen, so I'll have to bring it over here. Okay. And we'll click on structure for the edit so we can see what all we can do inside this wall. Now, normally, I would tell you guys that you always need to make a copy of this before you modify one. Uh, we'll do that as we go along. I'm not going to save when it, we're done with this little step because this is just to show you how it works. So you can see here that this tells us all the layers of our, of, our, of our wall type. I'll pull this down so we can see all of them. So we've got brick on the outside, an air layer, rigid insulation, damp proofing, so that's our water bar vapor barrier, concrete masonry, metal furring strips, then gypsum. And we're going to use this again, but we're going to make our own version of it. Okay, now if I go down here and click the preview box, you can see to the left, this is a breakdown of what makes up that wall. If we wanted to, we could move it around as much as we want. We're not going to worry too much about that. All right. Okay, so we don't want to change the original one, so I'm going to come down here and hit cancel. Now we're going to go up here and click Duplicate. So we're going to take out the part that says Exterior, because we're not going to worry too much about that right now. And we're going to change this to say Brick and CMU, let's see, Cavity Wall. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see that we've renamed, if we look in here, Here's the original brick on CMU. Here's our new wall type right there. All right. We're going to come back down here to structure so we can edit the structure. Let's see. I'm going to expand this out again so we can see what we're doing. I'll open it up. That way I don't have to scroll back and forth for you guys. So for the first one, you can see what we have here. We're going to go through and we're going to start changing out the dimensions on some of these layers. So for our brick, we're going to change it from a 3 and 5 eighths brick to a 4 inch brick. Under the thermal layer for the air, we're going to set the air at 2 inches. For the rigid insulation, we'll set that also at 2 inches. The membrane layer we'll leave at 0 because that's basically damp proofing. And it's basically just a few mils thickness, so we don't count it in here. Concrete masonry unit, we're going to change that from 7 and 5 eighths to an 8 inch block. What we're doing is we're going from the actual dimensions to a nominal dimension. So just to make life a little easier as we do these dimensions. But normally we would leave these alone so that they would actually show us the true dimensions of the materials. The metal furring will change to 2 and a half. Now when it comes to, comes to fractions, I could do 2 space 1 divided by 2. And that's fine. Or... I could come in here and I could do 2.5. Either one's the same. You can see how it changes it, so either one is accurate. Then lastly, on the JIP board, we'll leave that at 5 eighths of an inch. And I will hit OK. So now we have our guy, all of that right here. OK. So. 
and we'll put them cube there. So first thing we have, need to do here is now is we need to modify all these walls to be this new brick and CMU cavity wall. So I'm going to hit escape to go back to my modify tool. Now I could go in here and I could highlight everything to pick it. That's perfectly fine. Another way is to select one wall, right click, come down here to where it says select all instances and I'll go to in, in, in entire project. Because all of our walls are the exact same wall type right now, they're all the exact same. We can do that. So once everything's selected, either way you go about it, we'll come up here, scroll up, get to brick and CMU cavity wall, we'll select it. And you can see it thickened it, and because we set the exterior finish line for the walls, everything filled inside. Now right now we can't see a lot for what's going on in this wall. It's just a two lines representing a wall. It looks a lot like AutoCAD. Down here at the bottom, next to the scale, is we have our detail level options. Select it. You can see it goes from a single box to multiple boxes to a lot of little boxes. It's kind of how much detail is shown, so how many pixels make it up if you want. It's a lot like sandpaper. The finer the sandpaper, the smaller the detail we can show. So we're going to go in here, and I will go ahead and select medium. Now when you notice that we do that, we can now see the different layers of the wall. One thing that makes this a little bit easier to see even more is right next to the detail level is the next box, which is called visual style. Right now it's set on hidden line. Go down to the one just below it called shaded. This is very helpful because now I can see, oh, here's my brick, here's the airspace, there's the rigid insulation, there's my CMU, there's my metal furring, and there's the chipboard. Now, if any of you, when you're working, it looks your drawing looks more like this, what happens is you have your thick lines turned on. Up here at the very, very top, there's an icon right here that looks like thick lines on the left, a diagonal blue line, then thin lines on the right. If it's selected so it's turned blue, all the line weights will essentially be turned off, which makes it a lot easier to work in your model, especially when you're doing fine detail work. Okay? So, also, if any of you, for any reason, have a wall that looks like this, where it's backwards, select the wall. There'll be a little double arrow. If you click on that, it flips the orientation of the wall based upon the line that you drew the wall with. Okay? So for the most part, everybody's project should look about like this. All right. So uh, at this point, the instructions say to save your project as example 3-2.rvt. I'll go ahead in here and do an example of that. So I'll go up here to the little Revit symbol on the top, the home one. Pull down, go to save as, save project. Everything pops up in the other window for me. And I'll save mine on my desktop right now. Normally, you would save these on your USB drive. I'll just dump it in the desktop. Or, well, I'll tell you what, let's go put it on one. Um, I think that one's. No, not that one. Now we use that one here. New folder Revit Arc Tutorial. Okay, and I'll drop it in here. And let's see, we're calling it ex3-2. And the file type for these is rvt, revit file, rvt. And hit save. Okay. And I'll try and save those as we go so you guys remember those. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change these two walls down here to a curtain wall. So I've selected those two. We already have curtain wall uploaded into our wall types. And for this project, we are going to use curtain wall type one. So this one right here. And you can see now that it's changed it. It's a nice thin piece of glass right now. And it's set to the outside of that line. Now, when you do this, you should note that this wall, the interior wall should extend beyond where this wall comes in. That makes sense because that's how we would actually build this. All right. And if we want, let's look at that in 3D. Again, I'm going to go down here, medium. I'll change the shaded so we can actually see. You can see there's our walls. There's our curtain wall. So let's change these to like a glass. And right now it's one giant pane. We'll break those up later on. All right. 
right. So, and then I'm going to hit save again to close that out. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to our level one, and we're going to start doing some interior work to begin with. So, let's get where we can see that. Wall, and I'm going to select the interior, 4 and 7 8 inch partition. And if you look at the end where it says one hour, that means that that is a one hour fire rating on that wall. Uh, let's see, the height, this time instead of being unconnected, it's we're going up to level two. And we're going to base these on the wall center line. So you can see mine's already on that. But if you need to, just pull down this down arrow and you can get to any of those there. All right. And I'm just going to randomly draw this in because we'll set the dimension for it later. Actually, we're not going to set that dimension. We're going to align it. Sorry. So let me come down here. We're going to go up here to our... I'll zoom in so we don't do that later. Come up here to the Align tool. It's right above Move. And what we want is we want to align this edge of the wall here with this edge right here. Now, to do that, the first thing you select is the line for the reference. What do you want to move something to match? Okay, so this is the part that's not going to move. So I'll select the end of the wall. You can see it's set a line for me. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this wall. Now, if it goes in the center, you can hit tab to try and get to another edge, or just move your cursor around, and you can get that edge. So now I've got it there. Let's click, and now it moved it into match right there. Okay? Next, we're going to, and I'll do that one more time real quick on the other side. I'll just create a wall real fast. I will go back to modify, use my align down here, end, edge, and we're good. So your project should look like this at this point. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in our 8-inch masonry. Okay. So we're going to go over here to architecture, wall. And again, for this, I'm going to do this in my method for the fact that I'm going to do an edit, duplicate, and I'm going to call it an 8-inch masonry, then put actual 8-inch, because I'm going to change it off the standardized uh, 7 and 5 eighths, which is the true dimension of a, of a block. But I'm doing this because I try to make it a rule to never change a default wall type. Um, always make copies, because when you merge files together, walls with the exact same name, but different thickness, differing properties, it can, if, it can make disastrous consequences. So that's set to 8. I'll hit OK. And let's see. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a center line up here so we can get some work. So I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to go to Annotate. I'm going to go to Detail Line. Come down here to the center of this wall. I'm going to go straight up. And let's see. And We're going to go in 35 feet. Yes. So this detail line, this is going to give us a center line. It also is going to help us locate where our elevator tower is going to be. Now, we're going to have to modify the elevator tower a little bit later on, but for right now, we'll be okay. So I'm going to go to my 8-inch wall, and I'm going to set it based on finish face interior, meaning when I do the dimensions for this, I want those to be the actual dimensions of the inside. And we want it to be 7.4 by 6.10. which means that when we're doing this, we want it to be 7.4 wide and 6.10 up and down in this view that we have right now. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pull over 7.4. I'm going to come down 6.10. And this time, I'm just going to use my the lines that it gives me. So here I can see 
gave me a nice snap line for where that ends. Pull it up and everything closes out real nice. Now we want the midpoint of the outside of this wall right there to be on the end of that. So we'll highlight, move, pick our reference point. So the midpoint there to the end point there. And now, now those are nice and lined up. Okay. We'll highlight that detail line that we made. It was just temporary working line. And we'll just press delete to get rid of it. Okay. So let's see. Let's move on. And let's work at modifying the existing wall. So let's come over here to the left-hand side here. Now, right now, we need to change this section of wall because this doesn't make sense to continue this exterior wall type in this internal cavity where we're going to put the stairwell. So we're going to come up here, we're going to go to Modify, and I'm going to use the little break tool here, the split element. Okay? Think of it like a knife. I'm just going to cut through this wall. All I have to do is click. You can see there's a break in that wall now. Now I'll use the trim extend to corner. This little guy right here. Click this wall. Click this wall. Make sure you're clicking on the part you want to keep. Because if I did this, that's not what we want. Control Z. So I'll click that guy and that one. And now we're all good. I'll go over to the other side. Break. Or split, sorry. Trim and extend. The break is the name we use in AutoCAD. I'm getting those mixed up at the moment. So we've got that all nice right now. Okay, now we're going to have to create two more wall types to try and get everything squared up here, okay? So the first one is we're going to go back into architecture and wall, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick our C brick and CMU cavity wall because that's the one we're going to make versions of. So I'll select it, go to edit, I'm going to duplicate, and we're going to add at the end uh, in parentheses, no GWB, which is gypsum wall board. And we'll hit OK. Now, all that did was change the name. It made a new name for this duplicate. We still have to go in. We're going to go to Edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. We're going to take out these last two layers. So it's only brick through CMU. We're going to get rid of the metal furring and the gypsum. So I'm going to select 8, click Delete. Select 8 again, because now it's the gypsum wall. Hit Delete, and that's what we need. So you can see that it took those two layers out right here. Hit OK. Now select OK. All right. Now we are going to change the walls that are here on the... This is our stairwell right here. We're going to select those. I'm going to go ahead and select these at the same time. I'm going to hold down Control. See the little plus by my cursor? That way I can have both of them at the same time. Go here to my pull down. And now here's my no gypsum wall board right under the one we just made. And you can see what it did was it took out these two layers. They're not on this right now. Okay. So. Let's see. Okay. Minor delay there. We can keep going now. Uh, let's see. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another wall type. Go back to our brick and CMU cavity wall, edit, duplicate, and we are going to call this one, let me check what our thing says, okay, this one wants to call it 8 inch masonry with Jitboard 1S. I am going to, I'm going to come in and we're just going to, since we're using the same materials, I'm going to call it CMU. Uh, with gypsum wall board. We're good with that. I don't know if I can do that. Let's see, try it. Oh, yep. CMU with gypsum wall board. Go to edit. And then just like before, now I'm just going to be taking out the top layers. And I'm going to delete those four out. So all I'm left with is the core mas the concrete masonry here, the metal furring, and the gyp board. Okay? So you should only have those with the core boundaries on either side of the concrete. Let's hit OK, and I'll hit OK again. Now I can go in and I can draw those walls in. I need to look. I'm on Finish Face Interior, so I need to draw from the bottom up. 
it escapes so I don't ch keep chaining. This would be a good place to turn chain off. But you can see the gypsum wallboard matches up, CMU all matches up. If I did that wrong, I'll, I'll do the other one slightly wrong. I'll do it this way. So if I did up again, you can see that on this time it was going the wrong way. If you think about it, we're going clockwise around the building. Things go in the right direction. I went counterclockwise here. That's why it looks wrong. So you can see that doesn't match up. One thing we can do is we can click on the wall. We can flip the orientation. That looks good. When you do that, notice it doesn't merge automatically. Just click it, select the edge of the wall, drag it up a little bit, and you can see now it merges in just fine. If we had say our wall ended up out here somehow. Again, I can go in and use that align tool, pick the edge of the wall I want, pick the edge of the wall I want to move, and if in these I can even use the lock tool, so now these walls will move similarly. I like to use this a lot because it is helpful. Um, again, using a line is a very, very useful tool in these types of projects, and I use it a lot. Okay. All right, so um, all right. So if we wanted, we also could have just mirrored that wall over. I like showing you how to draw it simply because it's you get more practice with the align tool. Okay. So, but if you do want. Uh, if you do want to put in a reference plane back on architecture at the far right, reference plane, midpoint, midpoint, and we have our reference plane. Not hard to do. And it is good because now you do have a line that exists solely as a reference that you can mirror, and it's a good center line for the building. Okay? So, let's go here. Uh, let's see, I'm on page 3-18 uh, now of your work set. So I'll go back to wall. I'm going to go back to my interior forward 7 eighths. I can scroll up and down all this I want, but down here at the bottom there is the most recently used types. I'll select the 4 and 7 eighths partition, the 1 hour. Let's come in here, and we're going to be working between the elevator tower and the back wall. And we're on wall center line right now. I'm going to pick wall, uh, let's see, finish face interior, because I want the finish face of this to match up. So when I'm right here and coming off, I want the finish face of my wall to match that one right there. So I'm going to choose finish face interior. Okay. And I don't have any internal dimensions for this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly draw it. Oh, turn chain back on. See, my videos come with soundtracks. And I'm just going to draw around so I get to what's going on there. Okay? Let's see. Now I'm going to select this wall. And I know the interior to interior face, so I've got to adjust those, rep, those witness lines, should be six foot. Click the other one. Again, modify the witness lines. And I'll change that to six foot. All right, select this one here. The interior dimensions of these two rooms should be, of this room should be 19. I haven't split this into two just yet. So that's 19. I'm going to go back and draw another wall. And I'll just draw some walls because I'm going to match these up. So I need this wall here. I need six feet of clearance between these two. Change that to six. Now I don't need to do any measurements off these because I know they align. So again, back to that align tool. I told you we'd be using it a lot. The one I want to, the one as a reference, the one to move. Lock it together. Escape. Reference, move, lock, escape. 
Last thing I need to do is add another line that goes right down the middle. For that, I'll change the wall center line. Center to that wall. And that's good. So at this point, you should have driven, should have drawn, not driven, everything in figure 3-3.11. Okay. And I'm going to hit... At this point, we'll save as example, or exercise 3-3. So save as project 3-3. Okay. Got a little bit more to go here. Okay. So next thing we need to do is to insert our elevator. Go up here to our insert tab. Now, we don't have any elevators preloaded in this project, so we're going to go to our search Autodesk Seek, and I'm going to type elevator electric. Okay. And I will hit enter. And here we go. Let's go down here. Here's our library Revit architecture. So this is our nice generic one. We're going to use it. So we'll select two RFA on the right. This opens up the two options we have. We have a 10, 2010 newer file. This is good for 2009 and previous. So we're going to pick the 2010 file and go up here to download. And yours might ask you to log in, just like mine is doing. Okay. If you do not have an Autodesk account, please do create one and use your EDU address. And I need to log in. Sign in. So now it's going to ask again. I got to go back to download. And it's down here. Now I already have Revit open. So if I go up here and I click open, it will open it in our existing one. Now, because we're in 2016, 2017, you will need to update the, update the model. It does not hurt anything. If you want, you can always cancel it and leave it as a 2010 version. For us, we'll just upgrade. It takes just a second. So it opened up a new, new space. All this did was it's like having multiple AutoCAD files open at once. You're fine. We don't need to do anything to it. We're going to go up here to the top. There's two buttons up here in the family editor. One says load into project. The other is load into project and close. Let's do the second one because we don't need this file to stay open and it's just taking up space right now. So load into project and close. So it automatically gives us our elevator that we can place. Okay. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make sure I'm putting this in the right spot. Okay. Let's see, we need to make sure that we have the 2,000 pound version. Let's see, I'm going to place it. So you can see that when we're working the model, it has some references for where it wants to go. So we're going to place it, though, so that just like this. And what? Oh, no, not just like that. Sorry. OK, there I've got the back line. I'm going to bring it up so that the doors will match up on the front when we do that next. It's OK if there's a little space in the back. Remember, this is a generic elevator. So it may not be an exact fit for what we need. But we may need to modify our walls to show that it will fit. The generic one shows most every type. Okay? So we'll select that guy right there. And if we need to, we can move him. So I'll hit Escape, So I only need one elevator. Escape. Okay. Click on the elevator. Go to Edit Type. We need to look here. Okay. Now our instructions say that we need to make some changes. So this is the 2,000 pound elevator version. If you look, there are larger ones. This is the smallest. Okay, we're going to come in here under model. We are going to add that this is made up model 8864 and that the manufacturer is uh, Dyson Krupp 
elevator. I find it funny it's a made-up model, but it's a real company. And then I'm going to cheat. Oh, I can't do that, I guess. Then under URL, I'm going to do dub, dub, dub. That's W, sorry. Uh, dot T-H-Y-S-S-E-N, the Thyssen Elevator dot com. That's a real website. And we'll hit Apply, and we'll hit OK. So now, when I select that elevator in the model, I look over here, I can actually pull up that equipment. Anytime I hit Edit, I can read all of it. Anything that is a parameter in here, we can pull into a schedule later. All right, so we've got our elevator right there. So let's go over and let's see what we can do about... Okay, next step we need to do is we need to add the elevator door. So let's go back up here to Seek. Elevator door center. And I'll tell you, if you type these in the exact way they are in our tutorial, you'll be able to find them a whole lot easier. So there's our elevator door center. I want the 2010 version. Download. And again, it'll show up in your downloads. My methodology is we always just open it up. I verify, yes, that's what I want. Then I go into load into project and close. All it's going to do is going to say, okay, I need to go in this wall. We're going to center it in that wall. And you can see that it cut an opening for us. It's kind of nice the fact that Revit will actually do that. Let's click on that door now. Let's make sure it's the right size. So for this door, the size that we need is 36 by 84. So right now it's a 48. It's a little too large. Here's 36 by 84. Let's select it. And you can see now we've got a nice little matchup for how this works. At the moment, these lines overlap. So I'm going to take my elevator, move it back just a bit, and we're good. Because the trick is, really I want that line to match up, but I'm not going to be too worried about it at this point. Alright, so now we've got our elevator in there. Go up here to our project, save as, and this time we'll call it number four. All right, now it's time to insert doors on our project. So if we go up here to architecture, click on door, we'll see that all we have to start with is a single flush door. It's not really what we want to use on this. This is a nice commercial building. We want some glass doors in here. So this time, instead of going to Autodesk Seek, we'll load them from the preloaded families. So let's go to load family. And again, sorry, I have two screens, so it pops up the other one. Over here, let's go down to doors. And we want to look for, let's see, so we're already here. Let's see, your, the tutorial that I gave you is a 2015 version, and they've changed the folder formatting a little bit. So we're in here right now, and we're going to look for, let's see, the first one we need is we need a curtain wall double glass. So curtain wall double glass. Hit open. And now that's been loaded in, but that is a curtain wall type, so we can't really put it in yet. So we'll have to go back to Load Family, and we're going to look for the one called Double Glass 1. So, Doors. And if we don't see, so there's Door Double Glass, that'll work. And again, realize that some of these names have changed a little bit. Hit Open. And don't worry about this. All we're, If you want to be selective in what you upload, you can. We're just going to let it load all. Okay. Load family. Doors. There's a single panel. We need to find a side light and a single glass. So uh, let's look at our commercial, see if we see that. So... That one could work. Uh, let's go look 
let's go back and look at residential. Oops, not that way. Okay, real quick, this is our side light. So we'll go ahead and use this one real quick. So it's loaded. And let's load one more family. And let's see, residential. Okay. Now, if we don't see it here, one option we always have is go back to insert and door single glass. Generic. So here's a single glass one. We can take that one. And I'll take the 2012 version. Download. Click update. Load and close. All right. Actually, let's look and see if they have that side lights in there as well. Just turn on the generic. There's side lights one. We'll use that. Download. load and close. Okay, so now we've got all those loaded in. So let's go over to our stairwell. And we'll do the doors there first. So architecture, doors, and in here. So we're going to use a single flush, which is the one that was preloaded. And we're going to use a 36 by 84. So that's three feet by Let's see, 84, hmm, 84, a seven foot door, so seven times 12 is 84 inches. So this is a three foot by seven foot door. The way these are numbered is they're based on the inches because that's the control for how, for the parameter for how wide or how tall it is. That's why they're written this way. So 36 by 84, also because that's the standard way that we call out doors and windows. So I'm going to drop these in, and you'll notice that they may not go in exactly where I want them, but they're easy to fix. So this door, I need to change the direction of the swing, so from right hand to left hand swing. And, huh, that's 2-2 two, two the center. I don't want to do math. Click the witness line. Again, very, very useful. Type 8 inches just to verify it really is. Click this door, flip, witness line. Witness line. Use those witness lines. They make life really, really easy. All right. Let's see. Now we could repeat to the other side. You can also use the mirror function on doors. So it's mirror. So you can see the doors go in. They're now hosted into these walls, though. So if we move the if we move the door, it can only move within that wall section. Okay. So let's finish inserting our doors. If we look at Figure three five five, we roughly know where they need to go. Let's make sure that we keep that eight inch offset. So let's go over here to our doors. Let's change to a single glass. And all the doors we're going to use are going to be 36 by 84. So 36, 84. So we need a door here, 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 and here. So roughly about this hallway needs to be one. Roughly about there needs to be one. About there and about there. Okay, I'm going to go in real quick. This one's going the right direction. Modify those witness lines. Eight inches. This door needs to flip, so I use the flip instance. I'll set that to eight inches. Okay. 
Now, these doors down here, they don't have a set distance, but we want them to swing the same way. So I'll flip this one to match, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use my Align tool to make these doors match. So Reference, Set, Lock, so now they'll move together. All right, we need to put a single flush, and it needs to be centered in this wall. Door, single flush, 3684. Remember, we're staying with three foot by seven foot doors. And if I if I get pretty close to the center, almost always it'll snap to it. So there we go. Now I need to add one door here, one door over here, and again, flip to the right orientation. And we'll set this eight inches off. Eight inches off. Okay, last thing we have is we need to put our double doors down here. So let's go door. Let's see. Double door glass. We're kind of locked in on that one. So 68 by 80. Let's check if we were if we're supposed to modify that one real quick. Does not look like we are. So let's go just to verify. Let's go back to insert, and we're going to type that one in just to verify we have the right one, because that should be double glass one. Let's hit it. See what we got. Oh, there's double glass one exactly that we need. So let's pick that. 2012, download, update, and load and close. And I'll bet you if we look at that one, now we've got our size options. So remember, we need an 84 tall, but we need two 36s. 36 and 36 is 72, so 72 by 84. All right, now we've got our door there, and we're going to put him roughly, oh, let's call it, let's see, one there. We'll align these in a second. Okay, use my align tool, make sure those doors match up. And that's just an aesthetic of making sure they look nice. All right, and now on either side of those doors, we need to put in our relights. So let's go to Architecture, Window. Here's our side light. And our side lights are going to have to be 84 inches tall. So let's see. So here's a, hmm, let's see, did it say what size those are supposed to be yet? No. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So we need the 18 by 84. And we'll put that one in here. Now, we've got dimensions for where these go. Now, one thing you have to watch out with windows. Windows are designed to, to have preference to one side of the wall or the other. What that defines is the interior versus the exterior face. Okay? So, we all the, ex, the exterior is the side that the window is closest to. Okay? Because we create a sill on the inside. So, I'll put one there, one there one there. What I'm going to do is I'll mirror these over in a minute. That's why it was important these were aligned. So first off I'm going to set where this door is. Move that window slide down and let's just call that eight. eight. There we go. Now it looks nice and we can work with it. So I'll pick this window. That window there should be four foot six off the center of the door. So I've already got center to center. So let's call that four six. All right. Let's go up here to the other window. Now it could be, it says that it's one foot six off the edge of the door, but it's a three foot wide door, so it's still four six. But I'll go ahead and I'll change that witness line just so you can see that. I could go from the edge of the door now, and now it could be one six. Okay? And then window center to window center should be two, oops, got to click on it, two, three. So now we've got a nice set of windows flanking our door. Let's go ahead and highlight those windows. Use mirror pick line. Now we can use that reference plane. 
and now we've got our windows on the other side as well. Okay, let's keep going. All right, our exterior windows. Okay, so what we've already talked about, let me check what we were supposed to save there real fast. Nope, not yet. Okay, so let's go up here to our window. And instead of side lights, we're going to use our exterior fixed. We're going to go to a 32 by 48. So 32 by 48, which we do not have. So, hmm, we're going to have to make one. All right, so let's pick one of these windows that's close to it. So there's 36 by 48. Let's work with that one. Go up here into Edit Type, Duplicate, and we're going to change it to 32 by 48. Hit OK. And one thing we have to do is we change its width. So we need to come down here, and the width of the window we change from 36 to 32. So let's do 32 inches. Enter. So that's 2 foot 8. The other thing we need to change in here is we need to set the sill height. That controls where the bottom of the window is. Right now, the default sill height is 3 4. We're going to change that, or to 3 foot. We're going to change it to 3 4. So from 3 0 to 3 4. Hit OK. Let's see. So let's put in our first window. So we're going to go down here to this corner right here. And notice it's inserting it into the into the CMU because that's what's going to support it, not the brick. The brick is just facing for thermal. So I'll just place the window, select it, and we're going to work on those witness lines. So for the very outside edge, to the center, to this edge of the window, so I got to change this one too. Should be three four, three foot four. Okay. So now. I'm going to select that window. Up here, I'm going to go to the Array tool. It's this little set of square boxes. We've got that guy right here. We want it to be a linear array. We want it to group and associate these together. All right, we're going to change the number to six. So that means there'll be six total. That includes this one right here. So if I needed, if I needed seven and I need six more, I'd have to put seven because it's the total number including the first one. Okay? And Okay. I'm going to come down here to the center of my window. I'm going to click and move to the right. And hopefully my mouse will behave. Okay, pull to the right. And I'm going to type that I want that to be 8 foot 6. And that's the distance between each window. It's verifying, do I want all six of these? Yes, they all fit. That looks very nice. I want six. If I changed it to five, it would be five. If I change it to six, it will go to six. It's very nice how Array works in here. OK. So we've got that one in there. So now if we wanted, now we could use the mirror tool. And we can mirror everything around. Let's see. So. We can take select those, mirror about that line. All right. Now, to mirror it up to the top, we would have to find a good mirror line right here. One thing we could do is we can find the midpoint of this line, which is an option. Let's see. As long as I don't get the ends of these walls, I can select just those. And we'll mirror. Okay, so none of that, that really doesn't want to work very well. So what I can do, and this is the way to do this pretty quick if you need to is go to annotate, use those 
detail lines. I'm just going to draw a diagonal because I can get the midpoint of it. So select those again. Now instead of doing it that way, if I wanted to get them all at once, I pick one, right click, select all instances in view, that gets all of them together. I'll go up here to mirror, draw axis, and now I can find the midpoint of my detail line, pull over, so I'm going to flip now top to bottom, there and there, and now I'll de delete out that line. Okay. All right, and so with that, we will go ahead and save out this file, and I'll come up here and go up, save as, project, and we'll call that 3-5. We'll save, okay, and this is where we're at, and this is where we'll start at for the next video. Thank you very much, guys. Go ahead and let me know if you have issues with this. But right now, it shouldn't be too hard to follow that through and get that done. We'll continue in the next tutorial.